And welcome, everybody, to another glorious episode of the Cover 3 Deep Raiders podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, and the Raiders were busy today, um, doing a whole lot of things in the, at the new Performance Center. I mean, that place is a mansion. I mean, there's no question about it. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I have a special guest today. Um, Raider Cody is joining the program. Raider, hi, Raider Cody, how you doing today? I'm hanging in there, man. Uh, just like you, it, it's hot over here. Had a long work day. Uh, but you're right, man. A lot of Raiders news, and they got started early, so it's it's cool to get you know talking on it already. Yeah, I mean, how? Cr- I mean, it's it's funny because like the kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna say, "Wow, the Raiders have always had their own radio station. The, Ra- <laughs> the, Ra- the, Ra- the Raiders have always the Raiders have always had a great facility. Like you know, what I mean, yeah. it's kind of funny. We didn't, they didn't see what took place in the Coliseum, but uh, everybody's everybody's cool. Everybody's all right. And this COVID time in your in your family, everybody's doing good. Yeah, everybody's been healthy, staying safe. We've been doing everything we can, you know, just to stay uh, stay cautious. And, and honestly, it's kind of cool because I don't want to say I'm a germaphobe, but uh, just like you, like, you know, running a radio show, like, you don't want to be sick. Like, I no, went through, like, a spell for, no. for like, a month, and I was, like, uh, they, they were calling me Raider Coldy because I was, like, <laughs> I was all stuffed up. And, and it yeah. sucks because you can't – like, it's, it's obvious. So it's nice to yeah. – have a reason to, yeah. you know, wear a mask and, and uh, hand, san- sanitize your hands all the time, keep yeah. them clean and everything and, and not get any kind of sickness. So it's no, nice. No, it, it, it's, just, it's just crazy times. It's crazy. But it's, yeah. We can't wait for 2020 to be over. Hopefully when it ends, the Raiders are playing in the, in the postseason. Um, yeah. You did a great job with this, with the, with the raising that money for those under, underprivileged kids. Um, you sports, the first thing to get cut, from schools is music and sports. And that's, I mean, to me, and it's really sad to do that. I mean, I, back East, when I used to live in Connecticut, coached baseball, coached basketball. Um, it changes. Kids would see me 10 years later and still call me coach. You make it, and you make an impact in their lives. So um, great job for that. How, how did that all come about? Uh, just kind of really random. I, I wish I could say like, we had like the kind of this, this grand scheme of things, but um, I'm really weird and really impatient whenever I have like a hunch or want to do something and randomly just kind of like spark the idea. I talked with, with Kenny King Jr. I usually bounce a lot of ideas off of him. Um, and I said, Hey, like, what do you think about setting up a fundraiser and, and donating to a good charity? Um, originally it was, uh, if you're familiar with Murph, Murph's yeah. fan cave, Raiders yeah. fan radio. Um, I started connecting with them a few months ago and, and they do that like a once a year, like kind of charity drive. I know they helped the Blitnikoff Foundation and they're helping Mm -hmm. Ken Stabler's XOXO Foundation this year. So whenever they told, whenever I found that out a few months ago, um, I started kind of, you know, tuning in a little bit to their show and I I noticed that. So I told them, I said, man, I I had them on for a conversation. I said, I love that you do that. And you're kind of inspiring me. Maybe one day, you know, it's something that, that, that we'll try and fire up. And sure enough, um, we kind of poked around a little bit and one day they commented on my post and I had really no idea who they were. Greater Youth Sports Association. They commented, said, we'll be listening on one of my podcasts. I'm like, man, like, Hey, I feel like it's like doors open. Let's, yeah. uh, let's go after it. Talk to coach Woodson and Raider nation, man, uh, got behind it. And it, it was, it was insane. We had a, uh, originally in my mind, a $2,000 goal is what we wanted to raise was 2000 bucks. Um, and then after I talked to coach Woodson, he told me five grand would take over a school. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, cool, let's do five grand. I didn't think we we're going to hit five grand. Sure enough, <laughs> you uh, more we, than hit, that. we hit 20. So yeah. tw- uh, 20,000 ended up helping yeah. get what it is like. I can't even tell you how many schools now at that point, like 600 plus kids or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, handful of schools, um, with COVID going on, it's, it, it's, crazy because just like you're saying you know they, they cut sports and cut all that kind of stuff first mm-hmm. and obviously you can't have a full sports program this year um, yeah. with everything going on COVID wise so they had to really draw back their program and focus on like the actual kids uh, you know the future their mindsets because right now like you know as adults I feel like we're all getting kind of crazy even as like Raider fans on social media bro like we're just yeah. like you know, we're, we're trapped inside. I mean, for me, I've, I'm, uh, I mean, I've been working still nonstop. Uh, my job's been, hasn't skipped a beat, but yeah. a lot of people are stuck inside and I understand, you know, what that could do to you. 
And it's the same thing for these kids. Imagine being a, a nine-year-old, 10-year-old kid, not being able to hang out with your friends like every day, like you yeah. used to play sports with your friends. So they're targeting that. So they're able to tone down their program, um, obviously, because they can't do a whole lot of activities. And they're able to reach more kids this year. And I think that's that's um, amazing. So shout out to Raider Nation for, for getting behind this and really just, I mean, I'll never doubt the fan, the power of this fan, fan base ever again. No, the, they, they always come through. They always come through, no question about it. Um, today was the start of Raider Fan, um, I almost said Raider Fan Radio, but um, <laughs> shout, out. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Murph. Um, Raider Nation Radio, I mean, did you get a chance to listen to it? I mean, that's kind of, it's after going through the whole thing with the other station, I won't even say their name. Um, where like the Raiders, the Raiders would lose and they would still talk nine. The, Ra- the Raiders, Niners would lose and the Raiders would win and they'd still talk Niners. That was yeah. tough to deal with. That was very tough to deal with. But um, now they got you know the big names, the heavy hitters on there. I mean, that, that's a really cool thing, and it could be a really good revenue um, builder for Mark Davis. Yeah, for us. I feel like, you know, you're probably in the same boat, but a lot of us Raider content creators, I feel like that's why we did what we did yes. because we were so sick of uh, the radio coverage that was there before or anything. Like you couldn't on a drive, like what would you listen to? I mean, yeah, I guess, you know, the Raiders have their podcast, but there's only so much that you can listen to. And so now having this 24 seven thing, I really don't know. They're kind of, they're kind of pushing us little podcasters out of the way with this whole thing. I mean, Hey, hats <laughs> off though. I'm excited <laughs> to have, check, yeah. you know, you can't have enough, Raiders content really I mean they're you know they're going to add this and fans Mm -hmm. are going to listen to their 24 7 coverage whenever that you know finally is implemented um and I mean they're still going to be digging through fans they're still going to be digging through all kinds of different stuff to get their Raiders content so it was much needed for a very content hungry fan base I love it I I listened to pieces did you listen to any of it today I I listened to some of it today it was it was it was it was some good stuff it was just it, it was just weird to hear that that much Raider content on a on a radio station consistently like I mean it was it was it was just it was just like kind of funny I feel like they're going to switch to another sport at times but they just it was all Raiders all day so it works out I think it's I think it's great for them um and like you mentioned about pushing the podcasters out a little bit I kind of think that like if you look at Twitter if you look at you know social media there's enough there's enough. There's enough of the pie for everybody. And the Ra- oh, yeah. Ra- Raider fans will download your show, or somebody else's show. Like they just, they, they just don't stop. So, yeah. um, so that's gonna be fun. Um, so before you became Raider Cody, you were like, you know, ten years old, five years old. You were little Cody. So, so, so when did when did you know you were? When, when, when was that moment where you said, okay, the silver and black is my team? Man, I, ever since I can remember, I, I didn't even like, there was not even a time like where I really even chose the Raiders. I just knew mm-hmm. as a kid, like that I was a Raiders fan always. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and I just knew it. And that was mainly just because my dad, and I think, you know, a lot of Raider, Raiders fans grew up that way. Um, I hear, I hear stories of, of people choosing the silver and black when they're a kid. And that's amazing. But um, I guess I had the, the easy path of just knowing and not having yeah. to like learn it the hard way. So um, it just, it happened. And even then, like even through elementary, middle, high, even high school, I mean, it's like, I was a Raiders fan. Yeah. I had Raiders shirts, Raider hats. I went to some Raider games with my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wasn't like super, super invested until finally it was like, I got married. I was like, um, I forget how old now was I, when I got married, 22, (laughs) 23 years old, something like that. (laughs) Don't get in trouble Um, now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know the date. That's all that matters. Yeah, okay. There you go. There you go. I forget how old I was, but yeah, I was like 22, 23, something like that. And, um, really started like, and I started taking my wife to games and I felt like I was in my dad's shoes mm-hmm. and I felt like my, my fandom was just elevating like throughout those whole things. And, um, then, you know, I have kids and my son is now in the same boat and now I completely yeah. understand why I was just programmed in the head to like the Raiders because now my son, is just like obsessed with the logo. He's only three yeah. and he just, he doesn't understand football at all. Like he has no idea what <laughs> he's doing, but he's always wearing Raider stuff. He gets excited putting on a, on a Raider jersey and, and seeing all Raider logos anywhere he goes. So uh, he doesn't understand it. Neither did I, but now I do. He before, will eventually too. Before we hit the team, can you talk a little bit about this stadium and this and the facilities? I mean, it was, I mean, it just looks like, I want to take a swim in that pool. I don't know about you. Um, oh, dude. <laughs> that thing looks it's magnificent man I mean it's just, it's crazy what are your thoughts about that thing I mean it's gonna help with free agency everything in the future yeah for the first time we have like 
we're running full circle when it comes to looking at our advantages. Um, you know, you kind of, you have this, this look, you know, I mean, I, you can't tell me many players that don't want to put on a Raiders uniform. Yeah. We have the coach, John Gruden, uh, Will Compton's come out and said like playing for John Gruden is on like players bucket lists. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to come across a head coach like that. There's probably only a handful of them in the league that you can, you can say that um, uh, you have a really good fan base. Every player, I'm sure that's really invested and in knowing what it takes to win, obviously understands it's going to take, you know, a very invested fan base um, and someone that, you know, they're going to feel supported by uh, day in and day out. And now you have the facilities in a location where there's no state income. To, uh, you know what I mean? Like they're, I mean, they're like dang near tax free. Um, not, not a hundred percent, but a lot more than almost every other team besides anything in like Florida. So could be a uh, could amazing. be a blessing, right? That um, they didn't get LA. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? I mean, all together, I'd say like LA is still completely a Raider town, oh, yeah. and that was something I want to say I was pulling for it. Um, but they still completely have, I mean, leverage over the Rams and the Chargers. So oh, yeah. all together, it's it's amazing that the Raiders had three options where they could have been completely dominant in all three areas. We could have yeah. stayed in Oakland, and obviously with new facilities and a new stadium would have helped us a lot. Um, and kept that same that same culture around us. Um, we could have been down in LA. I think it would have been something similar to Oakland. I feel like the LA fan bases are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're coming over to Vegas now with a fresh start. And hopefully, you know, we we carry over that same energy. There's there's a lot of question marks in the air. And as much as I would love to sit on here and say like, oh, don't worry, Raider fans are gonna you know show up and show out. I want to see it first. And, yeah. and like I said earlier, I, I'll never doubt this fan base again. Um, and I think a lot of fans will be showing up to Vegas um, and, and bringing that, that same crowd advantage. But having that stadium, you know, back to your, I guess, your original question, having that mm -hmm. stadium and those facilities, Derek Carr said it. Like, he finally, <sighs> like, you know, he feels like he's in the, in the NFL. Like, I mean, yeah. and it's true. It's, it really is true. Like, you get, you get first-class treatment. You get um, – everything at your disposal all the weights it's crazy seeing the workouts bro like the first couple days at at camp seeing these guys spread out with like legitimate weight sets um like getting in full workouts like i mean with everything at their disposal i love it yeah i think it's fantastic i, I just i mean i we, we can't go this year it looks like it's going to be um it's like going to be no fans so i mean it's probably the Right thing to do um, um, yeah. when you think about it with everything's going on, even though whether no, no, matter, no matter what the numbers are um, out there in, in, in Nevada, but um, the Raiders, I mean, it, it, looks, it looks magnificent. Um, P.J. Hall, no, no, no longer a member um, of the Raiders. Um, you know, you can't get called out that many times and, not, and still show yeah. up <laughs> over, overweight. But talk about, like, you know, not only did the Raiders – got rid of him but like you know Mayock still is just moving he just he, he didn't just cut him he got something for him like he had the seventh round pick but he just never stopped that guy he probably was on his interview on Raider Nation radio and making that move on his cell phone it's amazing I love how people people are still trying to like bag on him too and and it's funny because they know that he's been dominating um all offseason moves the last two years mm -hmm. and they're using this like you know we cut PJ Hall right and everyone's like oh you know saw that coming yeah okay about time da, 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 da. people are you know ragging on past drafts yeah because you have to you ain't gonna you got, you're not gonna knock on our you know uh 2019 draft and there's no reason to knock on our 2020 draft at all. yes exactly um, so you know they're backtracking really and they're you know they're trying to dig up whatever they can um and, it, and it, it's just funny to see now that whenever the news came out later that PJ Hall was traded for a seventh rounder, then they're like, Oh, just a seventh rounder. It's like, well, two hours ago, what'd you want a one? Thought he was <laughs> worth nothing. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, like, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's amazing how that works. But yeah, Mike Mayock, man, uh, I call yeah, him Gruyock. He's a beast. as much as, as much as we call, you know, Mayock the savior, um, really Gruden is still, you know, hand in hand with every move being made. Yeah. That's pretty much, I think Gruden's final decision, but Mayock was the perfect compliment to, you know, take whatever board or whatever list of players or whatever need um, and really, you know, work together and, and, and figure it out. And they've done a great job. You mentioned the, night, the, the, the 19 draft class. Now this is the 20 um, draft class here. Give me a couple of guys you're excited about. And there's a, there's a lot of guys to be excited about. I mean, yeah. this, this is just like, I mean, we are, just, this is, 
I, you don't want to put too much on the rookie class, but if, if last year was any indication, um, they're going to be fantastic. After last year, I can't really find a reason I don't like any of these players. Like every single one of them yeah. I'm pumped for. I um, you look at guys maybe like Tanner Muse, like you could see he could develop more um, as like an on-field linebacker, but he's got the speed, he's got the makeup, he just needs to loosen up. I'm interested to see he could like bring something really special to special teams and, you know, maybe not, you know, show up completely on the stat sheet, but he could still be making an impact there. Um, and besides that, I mean, you look at like getting some interior offensive line depth and John Simpson getting two dogs in, in Damon Arnett and Amik Robertson. It, it, those are like, I feel like for me, I just talked about this like a couple days ago on my show and I said, I feel like Damon Arnett's going to be like a fan favorite this year, like of, of all the picks. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. Everyone loves um, Henry Ruggs. Everyone loves Amik Robertson there and they still will. But I feel like Damon Arnett's going to be that dude that's just like goes out there and kind of just has like that, that those statement plays or, you know, he has that swagger about him that fans are just going to like catch on to. He's going to be out there. He's going to be trash talking like stuff that like Raiders fans miss, you know what I mean? Cause that's what, we haven't had that on defense. We've had like these kind of like slouches in the secondary. You bring in, you know, Jonathan Abram, who we didn't get to see a whole lot of. Trayvon Mullen, I think, has a little, you know, um, underdog mentality to him. But bringing mm -hmm. in Arnett and Robertson, guys that are going to go out there with some attitude, you're going to kind of feel like, and these are the Raiders of old. Like, and yeah. for me, it's like, you know, these are the Raiders that, you know, my dad always told me about. I'm going back and watching highlights. I'm digging up stuff on these guys. I'm like, man, like, I feel yeah. like we don't have that on that team. Now I feel like we do. Yeah. And, I mean, that's – I think that was just the theme of the 2020 draft class, just get some some freaking attitude in there, and I'm pumped. Yeah, I mean, I want to – I want my highlights in HD, my playoff highlights yeah. in HD. In HD. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing like Grainy or Rich Gannon stuff uh, and Charlie Gardner and all that stuff like that. Um, defensively, that's been a problem for, for years. So, going forward – I'm, I'm just trying to be – I think they're going to – I'm being as positive as possible because I really feel like they finally addressed – I'm wearing 52 of Kurt Morrison. Um, I, I feel like that's the last rated linebacker we had who was good, who was decent, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, before him, it was Greg Beekard. So, we'll talk about Littleton. I know my, 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 all my Rams fans said they were, that you got a, we got a dog in him. He is a tree. He's a tremendous talent. Um, him and Kwiatkowski, um, those guys are really going to set the tone on defense, right? Yeah, in the words of Scott Bear, you know, welcome to the 21st century yes, defense, yes, Raiders. Yes, uh, um, and it's nice sure. to have, like, versatility, like, to where we don't have to, like, cripple ourselves with strategy on defense. Like, now we finally have a chance where we can go out there and be, I guess, versatile mm -hmm. with the same personnel on the field. Like, we're getting to the point to where – it's like Max Crosby's being really good, um, you know, as an all-around pass rusher. You know what I mean? He's making tackles for losses. He's rushing the passer. Cleveland Farrell, I think, you know, he needs to make a jump at getting at, after the passer. Um, but he's doing great at doing his job and, you know, set stunts, setting um, against the run. He's, he's, he's doing his job. Bringing in Malik Collins, Mo Hurst, Jonathan Hankins. We have, you know, three good interior defensive linemen that can be out there. I feel like any three of them on any down. Mm -hmm. Now you got two linebackers out there that can be out there on any down. You bring in a couple more guys in rotation with Muse, perfect. You got two safeties in the back. They can both do whatever you need them to do. If you need Demarius Randall to sit over the top, perfect. You need him to come down and cover a slot wide receiver, he can. Mm -hmm. um, you have a Meek Robertson. You have LaMarcus Joyner. LaMarcus Joyner is going to be the guy that's on the bubble because there's finally a lot, enough talent around him to where if he doesn't step up and play like the guy we want him to be, then we have replacements in yeah. line. We have, we have Amik Robertson. We have um, different guys that, that can rotate in. He can move back. He can try free safety if he wants to. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, Trayvon Mullen continues to trend in the right direction. Um, and Damon Arnett is, is the guy that I was just telling you about. So um, it seems like we're finally coming full circle. I don't know if you, how much you want to talk about defense, but I figured I'd just give you a whole summary. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, it's it's funny. Your last, I think I think I listened to your last show and you guys talked about the whole offense the whole time. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but this def I think this defense is going to be the the hidden gem of this team. I really do, and I think Rob Marinelli um, um, is one of the best defensive. I mean, I, I hate to see him Buckner go, but. When you have a guy who you can bring in like 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 Marinella, you got you got to jump on it. You got to jump on it. No question about it. Um, I agree. 
I cannot think of maybe you, you have to go back to the gaming years where a team a Raider team had this much potential offensively. I mean, Rugs, uh, Williams, um, you know, Edwards. The tight end room is probably the best tight end room we've had since I can't even remember. I mean, it, it's it's just a great, yeah. a great, great, a great. Just I mean, like, it, I, and I, I love um, uh, Foster Moreau. I mean, five touchdowns as a rookie. I mean, people talk about you know the Raiders struggling in the in the red zone. He was you know him his injury was part of it too. I mean, mm -hmm. better athlete than, than people give him credit for. Um, yeah. I think too as well. Um, thoughts about you know this offense, which is going to be, it looks like it could be dynamite. Yeah, hopefully it's just versatile it is what we need. You know, I feel like last year was really hard because, you know, we could we could switch the game plan going into games and we, we can try and implement different things. But I feel like it wasn't versatile enough to, like, change it as the game progressed. You know, I feel like mm -hmm. we went in with the game plan of, of the personnel that we had available, just like you said, losing Foster Moreau, Josh Jacobs being hit or miss, um, Hunter Renfro during that time. The offensive line being, you know, shaky on the side because of missing Trent Brown. Um, obviously, wide receiver was a complete revolving door as usual yeah, the last yeah. two or three years. Exactly. Um, and there's really nothing we can do about that, I guess, you know. But hopefully this year uh, we can do something about that. And, and, you know, obviously I think we're going to go in with a, with a top three offensive line guaranteed. I feel like we're going in there with one of the best backfields just because of Josh Jacobs. So then mm -hmm. you bring in, you know, Lynn Bowden and Jalen Richard are, more than good enough to be compliments um, and hopefully just finally settling that need at wide receiver. You see Tyro Williams coming in healthy, but he also has Brian Edwards right there, yeah. um, you know, kind of working with him. And I feel like that's going to be good for Brian Edwards. Um, yeah. all, a lot of these guys, it, it's going to be interesting to see. And, um, and and now it just comes down to, you know, Derek Carr and Marcus Mariota getting together. And I've always been saying this, like I feel like a lot of great quarterbacks kind of had that second quarterback you know, just in the room with them, like just to, to discuss and want to win. And even if Marcus isn't in the game, I feel like he's that guy that's going to push Derek mm -hmm. um, and, and make him the best quarterback that he can be on the field um, and and see what we can turn him into. Uh, you see, you know, you see a lot of those guys. I feel like I can't remember what Super Bowl I was watching. There's some like third and long play and they came up with some huge conversion and it was the backup quarterback that like drew up the play. He yeah. brought it to the coach and they implemented it and they threw it out there. I'm like, well, I mean, finally, I think Marcus Mariota, you know, is a smart enough guy and driven enough, driven enough guy to where other teams will see that kind of stuff. And, you know, hey, if if obviously if DC's, you know, going to keep this team the rest of his career, Marcus Mariota can hopefully, you know, find his spot in the NFL, whether that's still in the silver and black, because I like Marcus Mariota. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he stays with us. But, you know, you always want the best for your players, no matter the situation. Yeah, you mentioned that about, I mean, you know, the Patriots had – Brady, Garoppolo, and Jacoby Brissett all in the same quarterback room at one time. So, yeah, I mean, yeah so imagine that. Um, you, you mentioned D.C. Um, this is going to be the year, I think, where he just explodes and, and, gets, and, and, and becomes that, that guy again. I'm, I know people rag on me a little bit because I'm more of a fan of D.C. than, than, than some of the some Radio Nation. But, I understand. Um, <laughs> I, know you, I know you understand. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> but to, but to me it's like I'm not gonna go against my team's quarterback. I'm sorry, um, yeah. but you know what are your thoughts about him this year? I really think I mean this is just this is just gonna be set up for him that just really just really do it all uh, for the Raiders. Yeah, it's just a matter of him buckling down. I'm right there with you. I'm a huge DC fan, but uh, I'm not like blind to any of his faults or some yeah. mistakes that he's made or, or or plays that he could have made in the past. And hopefully, you know, it comes down to when we have that this year with more tools on the field and hopefully just more comfort for him, uh, whether it's in the system or the, or the players and the talent around him, hopefully that's where he's able to, when you see those plays of him dropping back and looking down the field, I mean, just ready to just like let her go. And he decides not to hopefully this year, like he's in a position to where he has an option down there. So whenever those, whenever they plan those shots, because when you take a deep shot down the field in this offense, it's, premeditated like like you, you're building up for it. you're hitting all these areas you're getting the defense to give you the look that you want mm -hmm. 
And then whenever he finally gets that opportunity to take that shot, hopefully, you know, there's that Henry Ruggs or that healthy Tyrell Williams or Brian Edwards or Darren Waller one-on-one down the sideline that you Mm -hmm. can throw a 50-50 ball to. Or they get all distracted with all those uh, weapons, and then there's a little Hunter Renfro running around in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you see things like that, and hopefully everything, we can do whatever we want. And we've talked about it many times, and if you listen to my last show, you probably heard us say, like, the biggest thing is going to be being able to roll out like a power offense if we wanted to yeah we can go out there with darren waller out wide or in a bunch with jason winton foster moreau all those meaty offensive linemen alec ingold josh jacobs Mm -hmm. and you can go out there and you could pick up four or five yards every single down you want to or you can run out there with four or five wide receiver sets including darren waller whatever you want to do with that yeah and um just like start slinging it spread offense exactly what he was you know, successful with at, at Fresno State and what he was successful with with Musgrave. And you go back to 2016, what made him so good with uh, Musgrave was Musgrave attacked their weaknesses on defense. And I think finally we have a talent everywhere to be able to find a weakness on a defense mm-hmm. and attack it with the talent that we have matched up against him. I really think that in early in his career, um, just adding Cooper changed – the Raider offense dramatically, and I think the rugs, rugs could have that same kind of impact um, for them. Like I said, I'm not I'm not saying DC is perfect. But I'm just saying that you know I think that he's. But some some people act like he, some people on Twitter act like he can't even throw a two yard pass. Like it's that's like he's the worst quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I that's where I just draw the line. I, I just can't. I got to move on. Um, Last question for you, for your Raider Cody here. Um, give me a guy who's going to have a breakout year for the Raiders and a guy who will not be here next year. Oh, man, that's tough. <laughs> that's a tough one. So. Man, that's tough. I think I'm just going to go hand in hand. Man, it, suck, it sucks saying who's not going to be here next year, but I think – I think I'm gonna I'm gonna let these I'm gonna let both my answers go hand in hand. I think we're gonna see a breakout year from Brian Edwards. Mm-hmm. Um, not early in the season because you know he's got to work into that scheme and Tyrell Williams obviously gonna get priority because he has the chemistry in the system. But as soon as DC gets some chances to throw some 50-50 balls to this guy, he's gonna. I mean, the way I've seen this guy come down with the circus catches. And, and he, if he pulls one of those off in a game, you, I mean, yeah. you give this guy a jump ball, he high points it. I mean, this guy's out there like Terrell Owens. Say he has a Terrell Owens type catch over a defender. DC is going to say, okay, keep this guy in the game. I'm going to keep throwing him the ball. Yeah. Um, and that's going to come, I think, you know, at least probably around the midway point of the season, you know, week mm-hmm. seven, week eight, week nine, you're going to see Brian Edwards out there, I think, balling out. I think in return, that's going to lead to maybe Tyrell Williams not being here next year. And I hate, mm-hmm. I hate saying that because I like Tyrell and I think he has a chance of having a bounce back year. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's coming up. I think he only has like two and a half million dollars in dead cap next year. Um, and with this young wide receiver room, the way it is, uh, it's going to be interesting to see, man. I think, I think that could be something. Otherwise I'd maybe go to the other side of the ball. I just want to see LaMarcus Joyner play the way he's supposed to. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, want to see, I, agree. I want to see him come out and play. But yeah. I think I'll go with, yeah. with Edwards and, uh, and Tyrell Williams. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's the prevailing thought. Joyner and Williams are, are the two guys who people people think might not be back. But listen, this is the – I mean, among all things, this roster has ridiculous depth that we have not had before. I mean, I keep forgetting. Somebody reminded me that we had Carl Nassif. I keep, I keep forgetting. Like, I keep forgetting some of these guys that the Raiders actually yeah. have. So, um, listen, great talking to you, um, Cody. Um, good luck in the future. Um, and we'll be listening. Um, take care. And see you next time. Dwayne, appreciate you having me on, man. Thanks. No, no problem. Take care.